Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. In today's session, we're just going to review the pull of the, the log. It's another day. It's been a few days since she did it before, but she did do it before quite nicely. If it goes well, we'll have her pull the log, oh, maybe 10 feet. Then we're going to take the log off the single tree and put the stone boat on to see if she can pull it. Now, it may be too heavy for her. She used to pull it when she was much littler with her mom next to her when we did pears pulling. But we're not sure if she can do it alone, especially if there's a weight on it, which at this time, of course, there is no weight. But just leading up and down the driveway, she's been real good. She's been much better than she used to be. Let's see if I can prove it by demonstration. I think she's beginning to realize Ooh, yeah, that she's uh, not really at risk here. So we're going to, uh-oh, no, leave, uh, leave it down and just bring the chains up. Aaron, turn back around and, and straighten up with her. Step up. You remember, she has tremendous peripheral vision, and she saw you pick that up, and the chains weren't even on. That's not our objective today. Our objective is to see if she'll pull it, if she will object to the sounds or the weight of it. The uh, desensitizing, what she sees and when she sees it is something we'll continue to work on with repetition as we try to do more pulling with Sela. Okay, now just bring the, don't pick up the white. Remember, she's seeing you very well. I'm going to come and help you with the chains. It's all right, Sela. It's all right. It's all right, my darling. It's all right. Okay, bring her back around with a little bit more force now. Okay, now she's got to know that that's the wrong answer. We were being patient. But now we're going to be less patient and more insistent. Uh, uh, give and take, give and take, give. Yeah, that's it. Try not to look her in the eye. Whoa. Okay, and hold on to her collar. It's all right, Zila. It's all right. It's all right, darling. Pull it a little bit to you. Okay, through the carabiners. Up to the hooks. It's all right, Sela. It's all right. Yeah, you're right. I forgot one of the loops. A lot of tack, a lot of loops, a lot of hardware involved here. Thank you, Angela. It's all right. Okay. Now just kind of hang on to that chain, but don't pick it up. I'm bringing in the log. It's all right. It's all right. So quick release was put on the carabiner that is on a short chain to the single tree. And now I'm moving back away. Erin is just going to, see she uh, she's pooping and peeing again, showing a little bit of stress. There is a chain on the end of that log. Erin's going to walk, we hope, without incident, without stress, up to the end of that shadow. And then we're going to take the log off and bring the stone boat up to the same uh, chain and carabiner and hook it up. The end of the tree shadow? Yeah, just the tree shadow. Okay, all right, be ready. Don't, don't wrap the lead line around your hand like that when you're moving. That can be dangerous. If, okay, can you stand up now and be ready to say step up? Don't look her in the eye, just step up, stay in touch. Step up. Step up. Go a little bit closer. I would say go a little bit closer and, and 
That's it. Step, Step up. up. Step up. Step up. Good. No. Serpentine. Good. Good. She's pulling it herself. Yes. She's pulling it herself. And that's what we wanted to review today. Okay, now she may spook when you hoe her. Yeah, see, she used, oftentimes gets off of the straightaway, which we're working on. Now we're going to stop the camera while we bring the stone boat up. All right, I'm turning the camera on now because I'm bringing the stone boat closer to Sela. It's making noise. If we have issues, I want to um, show you the issues and how we deal with them. We're going to uh, try and get her to pull a straight path about as far as she pulled the log. And if it goes well, we'll quit today because that would be a great note of resolution. It's pretty heavy though, much heavier than the log. Can she pull it? Maybe we'll only go half as far. Maybe she won't be able to pull it. We just need to try it and see if she can. Well, we decided to turn around and line her up on the driveway because the stone boat would move more easily this first time on the flat driveway. And now uh, she's getting antsy. So Aaron, let's uh, line her up again down the middle of the driveway about where you are. Then we'll bring the stone boat up to her. She was a little bit iffy about the sound. Coming, let's come this way. We, we switched direction because it seemed easier. Now, I like the way she's walking. She's showing us softness, willingness, no stress. Beautiful. There was a time where we couldn't get that kind of response from her. Little farther. Serpentine. Ooh, okay. Now, I'm going to stand behind the stone boat and try to lift it up off the ground a little bit if she's having trouble moving it. And if it looks like she's able to move it, well, then I'll just try to remove my hands, but be there just in case there's concern. And since we don't have a camera operator today, I'm going to move this back a little bit so we can get the path that we think we're going to be taking with Sela. Uh, and... Uh, show you success um, without a camera operator but leaving the camera on us. You won't be able to hear us unless we shout.
stop. Be careful when you stop. Okay, quick release. I don't know if you saw my smile. I did pull out my arms to show you I wasn't helping her. And the chains were way up off the ground because it really was a much uh, more challenging pull for her. But she didn't hesitate at all. She almost looked like an oxen, only a little mini oxen. She did beautifully. And we're just gonna do this with repetition and then uh, see what we can do about teaching Sila to move these objects uh, with a little bit of G and ha direction as well. Like if we want to do a curve in case we're uh, around a tree or something of that sort. If she's going to be truly helpful to us, it can't always be on a straight path. That uh, We started with the straight path because that was the safest and logically the most easiest. And we're awfully happy to say that little Sela my miniature Zebu heifer, daughter to Susie and Rusty, who are my miniature Zebu cows and bull, uh, got an A plus for today's pull. This is a postscript. I stopped on the way to the stone boat because Angela suggested that we put the quick release from the log onto the chain that's on the single tree in case there was trouble. And that's the reason Angela stayed in this vicinity between the, the uh, single tree and the, and the stone boat. So that in case there was trouble, she could quickly release it. Quick releases at almost every connection is not a bad idea. Can't always get to the quick release if you've got a spooking horse or cow. But it's better than trying to undo a clasp or a carabiner. The quick releases are designed to quickly release and I'm going to show you what I mean. It's now connected and if there were trouble even with one hand, if you pull the sleeve back, you could pretty much quick release the clasp as long as you can get to the quick release. And that's what's a little bit challenging if you have a spooking animal. But we've learned that from past experience, especially with horses, and we're using that concept everywhere, even with the mini cows. Our next session with Sila. We have three people, so I'm going to stand at the camera unless I'm needed elsewhere. We've hooked her up before we turn the camera on, and you see how the chains are drooping in the back because she's not yet pulling anything. Now, Erin, would you go ahead and quick release and uh, talk to her because she'll hear you and bring that stone boat closer. Last time she was able to pull the stone boat for a few steps, but the camera wasn't zoomed in on it. So this time we're trying to be closer to her. And if she's allowing us to ask for a straight path with the stone boat without getting spooked, we're going to just ask uh, Angela, who's at the head, and Aaron, who will be behind the stone boat, to try to serpentine a little bit with Sela, because we're trying to teach her G and Ha, which means things are going to touch her uh, on the sides of her bodies, on the sides of her legs, and it might scare her at first. Okay, so Angela, in a loud voice, so she hears it and we hear it, and and Aaron, you're going to concentrate on getting rid of that quick release connection if we're in trouble. So should I stand up here? No, stand behind, but because uh, uh, I want you to kind of hold on to it at first, <laughs> which is what I did last time, and if it looks like she's pulling it, in other words, the chains become taut, then uh, put your arms out so we know that you're not helping her at all. And Angela, if we could go down, let's say, to uh, where the big steps are there, where the shadow stops and the sun starts, okay. I'd be happy with that. And then, if she's behaving, from there on, just do a little bit of serpentine. Okay? okay. 
All right, so we're going to use step up for straight and G and Ha for right and left as usual. Sila, step up. There you go. That's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Those, those chains are taut. Now the single tree is kind of bouncing. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. Okay, now when you stop, she might spook a little bit. So Aaron, be ready. Yeah, she did stop the straight path. You know, that's a constant problem with uh, horses doing cow work, for example, at the stop. You have to teach them to give you a straight stop that's really important. So let me now zoom in. Okay, I'm zoomed in. So, uh, Aaron, uh, we're going to do a G and Haw, which we've never done. I'm not sure where you best are placed. I'm gonna be as close okay, he wants to be close to the quick release. Okay, but then remember that the single tree would still be on her and chasing her, so to speak. So we need to deal with you picking it up and keeping it behind her. Okay, that's the plan. Just straight away. Yeah, I'm zoomed in. She's going ha. Now she's going to try to ask Sila to go G. Yeah, she got upset. Good, quick release, pick up the single tree. All right. I you know, I didn't know how she would behave, but yeah, that was like too much for her to ask at this point. Maybe because the um stone boat is uh, heavy, I think maybe in our next session, we don't want to stop on that note, so just line her up to come back with a straight path with the stone boat. And then our next session, we'll try a little bit of G and Ha when we've got the wooden log attached, which is not quite as heavy. Okay, so try to straighten out. Angela, walk straight forward in the path. Aaron's putting the single tree down. Be aware, Angela, that the single tree's on the ground. Now, Aaron, talk to. Sila, as you walk up behind her, it's all right, Sila, and Angela's petting her and showing her that she's giving us the right answer. She's being very nice now. She hears something behind her. You can see that her head just turned. Okay, Erin is going to hook up the quick release. And since we, we know that she kind of pulls okay straight, Erin, just stay near the quick release. And Angela, you just come up. To close to the camera right here and let's try to get a nice straight stop. Maybe we're not ready for G and Ha, but we sure could work on straight stops. Uh, nice pulling. Just up to the end of that shade. Uh-oh. Thank you for pulling that apart. Okay, grab the single tree. Remember I told you that's still something that's chasing her. What do we think spooked her? Any ideas? And speak up. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not sure? Well, we can't stop on that note. Let's line her up again and try to get, you know, four or five more steps. Steady. Oh. And we certainly wouldn't do this for a long, long time without three people so that we can have somebody at that quick release. Now she might spook right off the bat because she might not be sure what spooked her either. Hooking up the quick release. Aaron's gonna stay by it. Okay, and we're straightening out her yoke, which tends to tip a little bit, but that's not supposed to be generally a problem. Okay, Angela, four steps. Sila, step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Okay, stop. Oh, her back feet looked like they might just go out of square. Um, and uh, it looked like she was about to maybe uh, bring her hip over. But we stopped her in time. We took the pressure off. Erin picked up the single tree just in case she did continue. 
And that's our moment of resolution. We've made progress today with Sila pulling the stone boat. We've got to do it again and again and again, whatever it takes uh, to get her to feel comfortable with pulling that thing behind her. And then certainly when you're pulling to do farming or logging, you certainly have to be able to get your livestock to go right and left and maybe even in circles. So we've got a long ways to go, but we've got endless parts to do it in and we're going to continue to train little heifer Sela to pull. We have shown that Sela now can pull a log and a stone boat in a straight path. We will use cones in the path to train Sela to pull with G and Ha requests. Our next session with Sela. We've got some cones set up because we've got to work on G and Ha. She does fine on pulling the log and the stone boat on a straight path, but we had a little trouble asking her to go to G the right and Ha the left. So today, there's only two of us. We're going to leave the camera on her. We're going to try to hook up the single tree without incident. And then we're going to see if holding the single tree up off the ground, Angela can lead Sela around the cones. She just did it now without anything on and Sela was pretty good, huh Angela? Yep. Pretty good, okay. And every time Angela works with Sela, Angela touches Sela all over the place so she gets used to feeling things. Okay, so here we go, and if there's something to say, I'll wait till I get closer to the camera. It is a very, very windy day, but not raining today, so we decided we have an opportunity for this next session with Sela.
take her without the single tree and see if it's a G problem there too. Here's a arm extension if you need it. We noticed definitely that it was the G, the right direction that she was consistently naughty, consistently concerned. So we stopped on a good note, but now without the single tree, we're gonna see if it happens in the G or the right direction. Horses often are one-sided like that. That's better. Okay, do some figure eights. Now without the single tree, we're gonna have to work our way up to the pull and the chains. And then the log and the stone boat and Gian Ha, one tiny baby step at a time. Yeah, she seems to be fine without the chains touching her, but if she's going G to the right, then uh, likely the chains are touching her on the left rear, so she's pretty sensitive apparently there. Good. So come on up closer. I'm going to try one more thing. You just hold her where she's comfortable. I'm going to take that arm extension that's in your hand and touch her on the left and the right and see if we get any more sensitivity on one or the other. She had no confidence whatsoever in me walking behind her with this arm extension. But then when I touched her on the shoulder and showed it to her from the front and then worked my way down on the sides of her ribs to her back legs, she was okay. She became confident that I wasn't going to do anything sneaky or hurt her. Oh, and that's attitude right there. She's saying, hey, I got horns now and I can tell you that I'm done. I want to quit this lesson because we always give her little treats and she loves to get all that tack off and go hang around with her mom and dad. And right now her mom is watching right here through these vinyl rails. And I just love that when they come and watch. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com dot com.